All right. Um, the last thing we talked about was the Declaration of Independence. Um, so the colonies formally declared their independence with the Declaration of Independence. But you know how this plays out. England's not just going to let their valuable colonies walk away. So they essentially fight to keep them. So the Revolutionary War goes on from independence up through 1783. Um, we're not going to focus on the war at all. That's more of an American history thing and more focused on the government stuff. Um, clearly, one of the things that has to happen after they declare independence is you have to have a system of government that is going to fill the void of not having England manage your affairs anymore. So the first system of government that's created after independence and it'll last through the war and after the war up until they decide to replace this system of government with the Constitution 1787 is called the Articles Confederation System. This is really the first system of government in the United States. Um, it's important for you to know that, again, the words in there, we talked about it earlier in the year, the Articles of Confederation is a confederation style government, as it implies. And if you remember from the beginning of the year, that's a type of government in which the national government has little power and that the states have almost all of the power. Um, the states kind of view themselves as independent from one another and will come together to discuss like key issues that they have to decide that impact all of them. It's no surprise that the first system of government we have is a weak national government and a strong state governments because we had just been through the opposite situation with England where we thought there was an abusive national government. So in the eyes of the founding fathers, it didn't really make sense to create an exact like replication of what we just revolted from. So we went the exact opposite direction. And there are some uh, major flaws with the system of government that they created. Um, and again, you can look at it today and, uh, and look at it and say, wow, like these are major problems. But you have to understand that all of these things were designed after having this really bad experience with like the English system of government. So in the Articles of Confederation government, there is only one branch, just a legislative branch, just a Congress. Um, in this Congress, um, each state can send representatives. But regardless of the size of your state, every state has a single vote. So all the states, all 13, have the exact same amount of decision-making power in this Articles of Confederation Congress. Um, there is no executive branch and there's no president in this system like there is in our current system today. And again, um, you may be surprised about that, but it's, it's when you look at it and you realize that we just had this awful experience with King George III, they were very like fearful of putting power back in the hands of a single person. So there is no president or executive branch. There's also no judicial branch, national ju judicial branch. Um, there's no Supreme Court system. Every one of the 13 states has their own court system, but there's not like a national independent court system. Um, also, um, in this Congress, nine out of 13 states have to agree to pass a law. So remember, every state gets one vote. In order for a law to pass, nine out of the 13 states have to agree to pass a law. If you want to change any of those things above, um, you want to create a president, you want to make it so that it's seven out of 13 states uh, have to agree to pass a law. Um, you're going to give every state votes based on the size of their state. You need unanimous support from all 13 states to amend or change any of those above things. There's no ability to tax in this government, meaning the national government can't force the states to give them money. They can request money, but you can't force it. And again, this is because of all the problems we just had with taxation under the British system. There's no ability for the national government to coin money. There's no national system of currency. Each one of the 13 states has their own system of money. And there's no national military. Um, there's no standing military. Um, the national government can request troops from the states if there is some sort of conflict, but there's no actual national military. So these are some of these absolutely significant weaknesses of the first system of government that we created. And this is what the Constitution will eventually sort of like try to change and um, fix when that's adopted to replace this in 1787.